Hi, so I wanted to do this video so that I can share my experience of what happened to me the day TVC building was brought down. It was a very traumatic experience for myself and Tokwe and the crew members and um, it's a day we'll never forget and uh, a lot has happened. Um, on that day, we went to the show because we wanted to share our views on what happened at the Lekki Toll Gate. And I had mentioned to the ladies that, listen, this might be our last show for many reasons. I sent them a message. They should prepare to come and say their truth to power once and for all. Either we get sacked or we get attacked. But either way, there's a possibility that this might be our last show. So we went on with that mind of just saying it as it is. So we're on the show. I spoke my top I spoke. Mariam spoke, Nima spoke, we were trying to get YK unconnected. I was told that okay, YK is on standby. So I thought we were going to go on a commercial break and come back to YK. And then everything went dead in my ears. I, no, nobody was talking to me. I kept asking producers, producers, please, what's going What's the next step? Where is Dolakwa? Dolakwa needs to come and tell us what's happening. They said, Dolakwa is coming downstairs. Don't worry, Dolakwa is coming downstairs. I said, I'm not seeing Dolakwa now. Hurry up. Anyways, we didn't see Dolakwa. And then everything went dead. We just didn't hear anything anymore. I got worried. So the, the cameraman, I think, got word. Or so the cameraman started getting suspicious, and then he peeped at um, outside to see if the was coming. And now outside our own studio is the newsroom. So as he walked, looked outside, he saw the boys already ransacking. He quickly he closed the door because it's huge, the big door. He closed the door. He blocked it with chairs, front poles to find a way to lock us in. That's when Topper said, "They've entered the building." Obviously, we knew that there was, there was a problem. So he went to the back door. There's an exit door at the back. He went there to lock it up. That's when I went live. And we're trying to see how we can keep safe while they were attacking the building and all that. Um, so we got really scared. I started calling the commissioners that I knew. What can you do for us? This, we're, this, we're on the attack. This is happening. And um, everybody was scared. The commissioner said, I spoke to the commissioner, uh, police at the time. Uh, it wasn't the commissioner. I think it was, I just, I, I said his name as HC police wale mr wale hc police now i don't know that's the commissioner anyway i spoke to him he said mariah stay where you are don't go anywhere my guys will come and get you so we decided to stay and we, we, were, we were patient so we continued our live then one of the cameramans went through the back door to peep to know what's happening he then saw that they had raised all the cars and all the buses he came back and said ah, no ah and for my own experience and exposure, <laughs> when there's fire, you get out. No matter what it is, first rule, find an exit. I said, guys, we can't stay here. They said, ah, no, 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 this is the first place. Let's just stay here. I said, I said, we can't stay here. Say, if there's fire, we can't stay here. So I said, let's go out there. Now I agreed. And that's when I said, the second life again, we are going out. As we're going out, Tokwe came prepared, she wore her tights and uh, sneakers, she jumped over the railings. And I was supposed to try to jump over, I was wearing a skirt. It was difficult for me to jump over, eventually I was able to get over. And then those guys saw us, they threw a stone first at me, and then they threw a pole at me. And the rush came to me, the man came, grabbed Tokwe, one of them took Tokwe's bag, asking her for money. The guy, guy came to me, smacked my face once, smacked my gate twice, took the phone from me, smacked me from here, this side. He didn't, use, he didn't slap like this, so he slapped like this, like almost like, like this, twice. Took my phone from me. He said, you're going live, you're going live. And I said, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, hey, Joe. Now cut off the phone. After that, more guys were throwing stones at us. Throwing, they started kicking us, pushing us, and kicking us, pushing us towards the bigger mob. As we're going, we're seeing people at the balcony. Now, we don't know if they're cheering us or of the routine and we don't know we just were hearing noises the, there's a large mob in, our, in front of us they were pushing us and kicking us at the back he was kicking my butt and kicking top of his butt kicking us their legs as they're pushing us to the mob as they push us to the bigger mob outside we now saw one big guy came and grabbed top of first he saw me at the back and grabbed me and took us to his house and said we are safe there my son and top cried like a baby we were just crying not too long was after we saw Tokwe's husband. He was now telling us that when the thing happened initially, the first thing he did, he wanted to run. But after taking about five steps, he just told him, what am I running? My wife is inside there. I can't
can't go anywhere. I mean, I would like for him to also share his own story because it's important that you hear from him directly. He, now we're going to beg the police, please help us. They were packing their own things, running away. They fled. He now had to face the mob with about two other of TVC staff. Face the mob, begging them that his wife is inside the building. Please, please. They wanted to attack him. And that person said, no, 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 we didn't come here to kill anybody. No blood. We don't want to kill anybody. Don't come and kill anybody here. He said he was now begging that his wife is inside the building. One of them had compassion. Now cleared the mob for him. Cleared them. Allowed him to pass through. Before he was now told that, oh, we've already gone outside. When he saw us, when they kept us, oh, the three of us just started crying. He was so... It was such an emotional moment. I have not seen a man cry like that in a very long time. He cried. I cried. He, he hugged myself and talked away so tight. Oh, goodness. We sat down and we just were traumatized. And Tokwe kept praying. She found the energy to pray at some point. So a lady that I know that she makes my clothes, she came in after about 30 minutes or so and said that she can get us out. So she tried to get us out. And that was, that was, so in her own, she now told the guy that rescued us, that don't worry, I know her, I'll rescue her. So the guy said, okay, he allowed her. But we now started walking on the street. As we were walking on the street, people started seeing us, ah, sorry, you talk about, sorry, Mariah, sorry, talk about. they kind of knew. But that guy said there were still gunshots on the adjacent streets. The boys are still there. Get back to where I told you to stay. He was so angry. They, what? Get back to the house. He now went ran back. And that guy, Tiana Space sent me somebody. You know, once she had a friend in the neighborhood that wants to help us, to come and protect us. He came. And he was angry with us. He was livid. And I thank Tiana's place. I, I, I really thank her. She, she called her friend, Billy, saying, you're in that neighborhood. See what you can do to help those girls. He came. And he, he warned us. He was really angry with us. He said, now you've exposed us. How can you go on the street? Now they've seen that you are here. We were keeping you quietly. Now you've told them that you are here. At that moment, I got scared. Be her. She would not made a mistake of her life trying to escape from the back. So we sat down again quietly. And the mob were now hearing more shooting. They heard soldiers have come in, shooting here, shooting. People were just scampering for safety. At some point, the mob now started coming. And it was now getting really, really, really unbearable. The guys on the street now tried to close their gate. Mr. Mark, Tucker's husband, tried to go through the house, inside the house, to peep and see what's happening. He spoke to them, the one of the men, one of the old men he saw out there. That man said, ah, the mob, they said they found out that the women are with the TVC ladies are here. So they are trying to put pressure to come inside. So he saw the guys protecting us. They came, barricaded that door, said they were not going to pass. Defending us, people would not know from anywhere. They said, and hey, our girls is there. The man in charge came to us. I don't want to say his name on public. He came to us, man, worry, nothing will happen to you. Then there's another lady that I, I, my momo had prayed for. Remember there was time I did a live where Momo was praying for many people. A lady had, had I think her baby, I think her baby was like four weeks old or something. There was some, so there was some kind of complication going on with her baby. Momo prayed for her especially. This woman sent in another person. She, in fact, that guy told me, I said, Mariah, I will take a bullet for you. My job is to make sure I take you home safely. So he said he's going to ensure that she don't worry. He now came because she asked him to come and get us to bring his tinted car to come and sneak us out. When he came, he said, Go and eat me. I will come and carry you, but it is go safe. Where you are now is the safest place. If I say I should sneak you out, hmm, they, will, they will mob us. So we just stay here. I know you want to go home. But just be careful. The other guy was complaining that we expose ourselves because if we now go, they can come and attack them. But why did you keep this woman? So he was really, really, really angry. 
that we took that step. But eventually, things calmed down. We were so scared because we thought that they would be overpowered. Because the truth is that somebody said, hey, if those, yes, they are protecting, they are protecting you. But if they go and overpower these people, because the numbers we are seeing outside, if they overpower them, there's nothing, everybody's going to run helter skelter. So if you are sitting there, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe. <laughs> this one, no. let's start thinking of how we can go. Because we're right in their midst. Eventually, one of our friends, Akande, who is a politician, so he knows that area very well. So based on top of his video, he was able to figure out where, he, where we were. So he came to look for us. He walked out. Come on. He walked through the whole thing and came to look for us. Things had calmed down at that time. So he was working with the guys and said, okay, what can we do? How do we sling them out? How do we sling them out? So they got us a cap, they got a face mask, and they got us like a, uh, a shawl to cover ourselves. So myself and Tokwe had to wear the shawl, the face mask, and I put a cap on. And after Tokwe, this, this guy is going, in fact, it makes us so conspicuous. Everybody will know, ah, is that not the, another, another, those are the ladies. You know, it was just so obvious. I said, let's remove all these things. Just have the cap on and use the shawl normally. Don't use it as, as a hijab. So we tried to, so they now snuck us through the back, you know, and thank God, I can, this car was um, tainted. So they put us in there and it was we were able to drive carefully and quietly. And that's how we escaped. Um, it was a horrible, horrible experience for both of us. And even the three men that were with us, they were worried for us because they are guys. They could have just more everybody they just enter the crowd and just yeah, 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 and find a way to their house but we were too obvious <laughs> we were too obvious people know us on the outside we we're too obvious they were so they stuck around for us until we we're safe those guys did not go so i thank those our colleagues in the studio they stayed even though they could have left they stayed with us those three guys so when i got home the husband obviously was distraught he was now telling me that he his mother and grandmother came to look for me. He said he actually had gone out, started walking, was hearing gunshots. They were telling me, Oga, Epa Dasile, Pebenye, Ojogunle, that place. They are shooting. He now thought about going back to the house. He now called his mother and grandmother, Kwewo, follow me. Because there's no way they will see the two of your, the gray hair on your head and shoot you. With that respect they will have for us. They follow me. Femi's mother, who is nine, the grandmother, who is like 94 years old, and his mother walked with him from our house all the way to TVC. There were, there were a few steps from TVC. They said they were walking through the crowd, the running, the, the ransacking, all the, all the chaos. They were running through it all. People were wondering, you know, they just left them. What are all these old people coming, you know? They left them. But when they were almost close to TV, that's when he got my call. And then when I told him that, listen, we are safe, we're in a safe place, he said, don't worry. It was then they were able to go back home. I am so grateful for my mother-in-law and my grandmother-in-law. They were willing to risk their lives just to make sure I was home safely. That, I can never pay that back no matter what. I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful to Tokwe for being able to garner the stop, support, the, the strength to pray. I couldn't pray. In my mind, I was just like, oh Lord, please. I'll, my small, small prayer of, Father, please protect us. Father, protect us. Father, protect us. But Tokwe was doing the correct prayer, singing and praising God and praying, knowing that we'll be secure. I want to thank everybody who has reached out to us. I have never in my life experienced this kind of thing before. Never. Not even in the least. Because I even, I, I even forgot to mention the part where the guy brought a broken glass to my face like this. He had a white cloth on his face. Young boy, his eyes were staring at me. He was like, he would stab me if I say anything. When I saw that, I said, hmm. This is the end indeed. I was just thinking to myself, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? So, yesterday, or today, it's two days now, 
two days ago. I can never forget it. And um, I, I, I am just grateful for all the love and support we got. So many, we had over 500 messages. I mean, the messages kept coming in, calls. We had about 200 calls. Instagram, everywhere, messages, people were sending us messages. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. the goodwill that we have gotten so far by God's grace and mercy shall not be destroyed in Jesus' name. And those of you that, that love our show, <coughs> we pray that that thing that we do that makes you love this show, <coughs> that the Lord will continue to help us to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you to everybody who has been there for us. We appreciate it. And we ask that Lord continue to keep us in prayer. Because TVC is not just about one man. TVC is about loads of people. Their families, their ways of livelihood, their means of livelihood, and how they get by and take care of their family. That's what TVC is about. It's beyond the owner or not the owner. And I thank you all for the support you've shown me so far. God bless us as we birth a new Nigeria. <laughs>